there are this global ecosystem of these different initiatives that are promoting the concept, validating, working to support. I think as the field is moving forward, it's an opportunity for us to do much more closer coordination and work and integration of activities to have the kind of impact that we look at. Um, we are supported by five bilateral donors um, who we continue to thank for, which is the OSAID, Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs, CEDA, UK DFID, US, USID. We're hosted by, um, it's an initiative hosted by the United Nations Development Program. And we also have the UN Global Compact and Clinton Global Initiative as our strategic partners. What do we do? We're a commitment-based initiative, uh, but unlike many other uh, initiatives such as, we require companies both to commit to the principles of inclusive business, but also show proof of implementing new initiatives or new business strategic lines uh, around inclusive business, which include the poor as consumers, producers, entrepreneurs in their core business operations. So we bring a unique evidence-based approach to the field. And we believe that uh, this demonstrates to the private sector that inclusive business can be both profitable, open new markets, and create social impact. Our membership, which includes Novartis, uh, Muji here, two of the IFC, Fino just joined, and Water Health International. Um, basically, it's a leadership pl platform um, bringing these peer leader companies. We do a lot of advocacy at a global, national level um, to really make the case for inclusive business, uh, impact measurement, and what we're actually increasingly looking at is look, the need for ecosystem facilitation at a country level, really trying to bring together and to try to address some of these binding constraints, whether on the policy or um, in terms of the enabling infrastructure. So this is an area we're, we're, we're moving into. Based on the collective wisdom, which then our Muji in this case will give more specific details of our 82 companies, I just have three broad observations. We, we do believe that inclusive business has come of age right now. Um, in our last event that Erico and others were attending two weeks ago, you saw an initiative from Turkey, France, Japan, Brazil. So you see initiatives across the world. Um, there's also an increasing recognition of the development impact of such initiatives. It's still, you know, at a firm level analysis, we're trying to bring in more in the aggregate of all these. Um, but there's a lot more that needs to be done to uh, promote, uh, you know, advocate. This is where we think we can collect. We need to do more to, to the policy agenda, to other companies to really show, demonstrate, and validate the business models. Uh, but at the same time, despite more companies embedding inclusive businesses in their core strategies, uh, it's the, the scale issue is, is, is a big issue. And what keeps inclusive business models from reaching their full potential are challenging operating environment and significant gaps. So um, inclusive business entrepreneurs need conducive ecosystems. And uh, these ecosystems include national governments, um, you know, uh, development partners, research, and other ones. And one of the things we're trying to do, and we're, we're going to start in Kenya and the Philippines, is uh, try to work in building this inclusive business ecosystem with uh, the BCTA member company and other partners in looking and trying to address. Now, in terms of Muji here, I, uh, which is, we were very, we were so excited when Muji became part of the BCTA. Uh, and is an example of the kind of shining examples of, of inclusive business practice, which they've had from the beginning when they were doing. Uh, Muji, I would say, is, is a lifestyle company that um, provides products um, uh, at an affordable price to, for the daily needs of you know, cl clothing, household goods, and food. And their basic principle is uh, to develop new simple products at a reasonable price and make, make best use of the materials while looking at environmental issues and others. Um, you know, he can talk more about the details of the operation, but with the five governments, when we're looking at the um, BCTA's applications to join um, uh, our, our initiative, and I'm, I take the liberty to make the three points that I shared that, that we thought was interesting is, they had a focus on post-conflict and transitional societies. Um, Kyrgyzstan, um, looking at Cambodia, and with a lot of challenges. So the fact that the MNC was committing to a supply chain in these countries, especially like a landlocked country like Kyrgyzstan, was unique among our membership. We were very impressed by that. 
The second thing was that in their application, in their sort of activity business plan that they shared, it was a lot of emphasis on the development part of the equation, you know, focusing on women, environmental sustainability, natural dyes, you know, reducing waste. And they were trying to work with JICA um, and also uh, now hopefully with other actors in the ecosystem in trying to provide technical assistance to this community. And, and finally, I think that um, the carefully thought out approach was very important because in these markets you have to be careful when you, you know, as you move in, as you're trying to do. So we thought that was very much another uh, important part of the uniqueness. Um, Kyo Suzuki, who has, we're privileged that flew in from Japan today, uh, is the director and general manager of household division at Ryohin Keikaku Muchi. Um, he's here, um, and he'll speak more about the initiative. Um, he's been working in Muji, looking across and building out this whole uh, set of uh, product lines. Um, he's a graduate of Northwestern Kellen School in Evanston, and before he joined Muji, he worked at the Overseas Trading Division of Cebu Department Store. Uh, we welcome him to share his perspective fresh off from Tokyo about how he sees Muji's inclusive business sort of uh, strategy in coming years. Can I Hello, I'm Kei Suzuki, and uh, Mr. Sumai, thank you very much. And also, let us uh, jo join the BCTA and the introduction. And also, sorry. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's a great honor to be here uh, to the all of you, the leaders of the inclusive business. And the, um, at first, uh, I'd like to introduce about the company. I wonder if you know about the store called Muji. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, so some of you don't know about our, our company, so let me uh, introduce about the company first. And uh, our company is the uh, name is Rohin Keikaku, very difficult to pronounce even for me. <laughs> and the, we operate a uh, shop called Muji. And the, uh, actually our company, oops, sorry. <laughs> our company is established in 1989. But interestingly, our concept of Muji is was born in 1980. Uh, we were born as, uh, how do I say, the division of a retail store. Then later, our concept has been so successful, became an independent company. And now we have about just over 500 employees, and the total num uh, annual sales are about 1.7 billion yen. And we are listed company at TSE1. And we have uh, over, uh, in total, 600 stores across the 23 countries and the region. And the, uh, in the US, uh, actually you have, I think now six, uh, sorry, not yet in Washington DC, <laughs> I hope soon. <laughs> yeah. And the Muji, as I said, it was born in 1980, and the, uh, as an antithesis, to the consumption society, if I may say. In that, around that year in Japan, uh, supply exceeded the uh, demand. So many companies are starting to, as I say, almost force the consumers to buy their products by doing some market campaign or putting their brand names or every year changing models to nearly force consumers uh, to, as I say, to force the products. Then uh, our concept founder thought, that sounds, seems something wrong. So, we, for example, we saw some uh, customers nearly like uh, misled by the brand names and have to pay much more than they should have. So, these are the four key concepts that the, our uh, founder thought. The, we thought consumers, as I say, have to take the initiative. So antithesis to the concept society, and also wants to the left the rooms for the individuality of the customer themselves, and not necessary to pay too much money on the brand name itself, no name, anonymous, and always viewpoint of the purchasers, the consumers. 
So uh, in overseas, uh, we are called Muji, but the Muji originally comes from the uh, Japanese name, which means, uh, oops, sorry, Muji Rushi Yohi, which means the uh, no brand names, but quality goods. So even now, none of our products carries the product uh, logo on itself because we do not want the customer to misled by the, even the brand name. So, and from the beginning, because we have started the, as an antithesis to the consumption society, uh, we always also wanted to be what, thinking what is very good thing. So uh, always want to have the harmony, particularly with the nature and human and the products. And also, uh, we always want to uh, make the good things through the, our main business activities, not doing business and separate to something good. Always wants to incorporate our main business activities uh, to the good things for the society. So uh, these are the first 40 uh, products. And when we uh, plan the products, uh, we thought, uh, say, selection materials, streamlining processes, and simplified packages. So for example, uh, we are, the, I think, the first retailer who sold uh, uh, recycled paper stationaries over 30 years ago, well before the people start talking about other say, ecological issues. And not only the products are thinking the relationship with nature and the human, we have uh, started the operating campsite with the working with the local municipality. And the over, as I say, we have three campsites since 1995. And that also well before the people talking about the, as I say, live in the, as I say, uh, nature whatsoever. And now we carry, uh, we sell over 7,500 items, but uh, try to realize our concept, uh, our biggest ticket items, and the literally biggest item is like, uh, even with a house. Even for the house, we kept our concept. So uh, this is very durable, even in Japan, which has an uh, earthquake or typhoon, and uh, with the strong wall that we can have the customer can have the uh, freedom for the house, to set up their rooms. So if you're on by yourself or your couples, you have a much room. Later, if you got the kids, you can have the separate wall later. And the uh, very durable, like our other products as well. And these are the other representative products of ours. Uh, for example, this one, not easy to see on the slide, but uh, this is what we call the uh, towel, which has the next life. <laughs> So people initially started with us uh, using uh, the bus towel, but uh, there's some, see, as I say, line between the, uh, like this. So after you use as the bus towel, you can cut neatly, so not breaking the part into, the, so you can use as the, uh, like this, and eventually as a duster. So also we are uh, using a lot of organic cotton, and the thinking more about the, the uh, farmers who are actually producing the uh, cottons, thinking the uh, say health and also the environment issues. So for all that Muji, always thinking to try to make the uh, good things through the main business. And these are the, some other examples of the, uh, our activity, which has more social aspects for example, uh, this one is the, uh, we're working with the uh, non-profit organization in Iwate Prefecture, which affected a lot by the tsunami earthquake and the tsunami. And the, we introduced their local like uh, quilting products and setting at our stores to help them to be, uh, as I say, their lives. And also another example is like uh, this alpaca from the Peru. And we have our own like uh, resourcing uh, purchasing team, and he visited the in Peru, and we realized before we thought that alpaca is white, but uh, now uh, now we now we know that the uh, yes, 97 percent alpaca uh, is white now, but seven years ago only three percent was white, 
in last seven years, a uh, human changed, I'd say, uh, raised more white albaca because easy to dye, dyeing colors. Then, but we thought that stuff something wrong. We want to keep the nature color, and also we realized that there are Quechua tribe people living very well with the alpaca. So we started buying the more uh, brown or black natural color alpaca through the NPO who are helping the Quechua tribe. And they also, of course, fair trade or tape for two exercises or pink ribbon activities for the breast cancer or recycling projects. And all of these exercises or activities are, as I say, initiated by our people, not company decided to do and let's do. Everybody at our Amuji always thinking, so suggesting company, I want to do this, I want to do this. So even for the, our exercise in the uh, Kyrgyz or Kenya, it also started as uh, one of the staff suggestion. And today, unfortunately, she could not come over here, but Akiko, one of my colleagues, she literally, literally knocked the door of JICA, Japan International Group Agency. Hi, I'm from Muji, JICA-san, uh, dear JICA, can, can't we do something good uh, business with you? The business, but a good thing for the society. Then JICA welcomed her idea, and they collected over 80 ideas from all over the world. And out of 80, uh, we picked two ideas, uh, one collaborating with the Kyrgyzstan people, another one with the uh, Kenyan people. So not easy to maybe recognize because we realized the Kyrgyzstan people are very similar to us. <laughs> there is a saying like, uh, if you like meat, then our ancestor went to the Kyrgyz. If you like fish, the people went to the Japan. So <laughs> it is a true saying in Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, and these are local other producers. We work mainly with the uh, local, uh, with over 300 local women uh, who utilize the, we utilize these local, as I say, failed products. And the, I heard that in Kyrgyzstan, like uh, GDP per capita, like $850 per year. But uh, with this project, the uh, last year, for, this is the third year this year, and average $300 for the per person can, um, with only with our project. So this is the, one of the, the products that we created, like iPod case or like a business card case. And another project is with the uh, Kenya people. And the, before the Kenyan people had used the soap stone, and often they colored the, uh, these products. But uh, the Muji always thinking what is the really uh, body for the customer, and we suggest to uh, no color, so just utilizing the natural texture and like this product. And the, by taking, uh, using the natural color, uh, we could suggest our customer had a more daily use product, not for the souvenir only. And these, as I say, with the project, uh, we are working with JICA. But one distinctive point of our project is that even before, like we, uh, we I, like I show you, like uh, we have done the like, work directly with some village in India or wherever. But uh, thanks to JICA, uh, we, as I say, uh, we could meet the people in Kyrgyzstan because if I just simply thinking from the business standpoint, uh, Kyrgyzstan is not easy to start a business. But the JICA has done the project called One Village, One Product uh, Project uh, to uh, empower the local community utilizing the local product and the skills. So then uh, we started with the uh, uh, Kyrgyz and the Kenya. And the, I, when I visited the uh, Kyrgyz and the uh, producers, it seems very, very happy because the, uh, by producing our products together, they recreated the community and of course they can get the cash incomes. And also uh, in Kyrgyz they say that not always easy for women, not easy to go outside and um, as I say, some making groups. But now their husband are encouraging to go to the community to create the uh, Muji products. With. And, uh, and finally, uh, this is the uh, uh, project in Cambodia. And the, this is the actual products. This is the, oops, 
power well and the power well uh, cotton is exempt from the Egypt, like uh, organic cotton. And the, this produce also contributes a lot to the local community, like uh, uh, for making green in the desert. And but also a unique point is this one is like uh, we uh, dyed this towel. It, for example, this remains tips, uh, uh, wooden chips. Uh, at Muji, we also produce the furniture, but always we are trying to make the best use of the furniture, but inevitably this kind of the, uh, as I say, wood <laughs> chips it remains. So uh, with working with Mr. Morimoto, who has the maestro for the natural dyeing, and generally people think that natural dyeing is not strong for the color fastness, but uh, he has the special, traditional but special technique to make the color fastness strong enough even for like a Muji, like a retail chain. Then uh, working with him, and we uh, managed to uh, make this technique the, uh, let's say, more sustainable for us. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, these are the, uh, the pro projects and the, yeah. And the, at Muji, as I say, like, uh, uh, it is very privileged, as I say, to be part of the uh, business called Action. And also, uh, we realized that the, uh, we thought that the, uh, we, sorry, because we wanted to do this kind of exercise because of our, our concept or origins. But we now we realize that the, uh, what we have been trying to do is the good thing. <laughs> and the, uh, even uh, selected as the one the business called action exercise. And also today, I could join the uh, this great, as I say, uh, conference. I'd like to, as I say, uh, continue to communicate with all you uh, people, and I want to progress further our inclusive business, and that is uh, the perfect fit to a music concept, and also now we realize that it is a very important thing for the future, all of us. Sorry. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. K. Suzuki personally, because I actually met him just very recently at Saba's event in New York in Business Call to Action, and I was so moved by his project, and I said, you have to come to Washington. And uh, he literally <laughs> flew in today, this morning, and he's leaving tomorrow. So we really want one more uh, you know, we applause for him. Thank you, thank you so much. And the thing that is very important is that so many of us know so many NGOs that are doing these types of projects with women, mm -hmm. but it's the value chain that you have as Muji mm -hmm. that creates the income opportunities that mm -hmm. is sustainable mm -hmm. for these women. Mm -hmm. So I think that the lesson to us mm -hmm. is that there are lots of social entrepreneurs that we have to always say, I don't know how to help you, mm -hmm. but yet, there are possibilities, mm -hmm. so I think that that's wonderful. And I think we will include you mm -hmm. into our inclusive business society <laughs> here. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. How are you feeling now? It's, it's probably you must be feeling like a marathon runner at the Olympics who have already run, run about uh, 40, 42 kilos. So my role here is to get you to the goal line by running on the, you know, the last 195 meters, right? Um, so, I, so my role is here to wrap up. Uh, today we had a lot of uh, interesting conversations, active conversations, many points uh, around uh, issues of the how to engage with the base of the pyramid, how you you know solve your challenges. So I feel like a little bit as an IFC uh, uh, being challenged because as, uh, you know I think going forward 
we really need to engage with many of you to actually come up with the solutions for your challenges. And uh, that's the, also the, uh, the focus of IFC, the client focus, and coming up with the solutions for the client. So that's very good. I'm feeling challenged, but I feel very good, uh, very excited about. And then also, the one more major takeaway take for actually the past two days, uh, because we had the brainstorming session with the clients and, uh, yesterday, is the form, you know, we, we just established the Inclusive Business Council, which is a network of the uh, Inclusive Business IFC clients. But I'm already, and then I feel very good about uh, that formation. And, but I'm already looking at the future. So next phase of this Inclusive Business Council, uh, one way I think is the partnering with the, with the entities, groups, companies beyond the IFC Inclusive Business Clients. Well, things like maybe business call to action, uh, shared value initiatives, got Novartis and other large companies. And then, you know, we kind of move the whole inclusive business agenda forward and then the scale up. So that's the thing that I'm, you know, my, in my mind, I'm also excited about it. And then uh, by the time, next time we're gonna, we uh, uh, gather together, uh, I think we, we can do something about it as well. So, that, you know, so with that, let me conclude uh, this uh, uh, forum. So thank you very much. Uh, I see clients who came all over the place, to, uh, all the way down here. And I also thank you, um, Mr. Suzuki Doge uh, Sabah, and then also uh, Ted London. Uh, for joining us and spending us, you know, your precious time with us. And uh, also, of course, there's other participants who came over in the rain and the traffic. Uh, thank you, and the busy time, thank you so much. And then lastly, I'd like to say uh, my team, I'm not going to mention the, everybody's name, but who helped the, uh, this uh, forum uh, uh, happen. So thank you so much, and uh, until next time. See you.